On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we'll go around the island with this week's notable catches. We'll have the latest events. We'll go over some regulation changes and reminders and our correspondents check in from around the island. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today's Thursday, June 22nd, 2023, and I have to ask, will this wind ever stop blowing? These easterly winds have made fishing difficult with no place to hide, to say the least. But it looks like we may get some relief this upcoming weekend. We'll check in with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin later in the broadcast. The big news is that the new striped bass regulations are now official. The slot is only 28 to 31 inches, one fish per day. That started Tuesday of this week. Keep in mind, sea bass season also opens tomorrow, June 23rd. And remember the change to the regulation with a 16 and a half inch minimum size limit now on them. This week's digital edition of the Fisherman Magazine has a great read by Tony Durso on bucktail trailers. Just in time now that the fluke bite is warming up. And Toby Lipinski shares his insights on lithium power for your kayak. And fishing under the lights in the summertime can be very productive. Kyle Quinn has a great article on this subject. A good reason to be a subscriber to the Fisherman Magazine is that you're automatically entered into the Dreamboat Contest. And your chance to win a center console from Steigercraft powered by Yamaha. 30 bucks get to 12 glossy print issues and all the digital issues sent to your inbox. It's the best deal going out there. Now, let's go to the 2023 Dreamboat Challenge update. Now it's time for the Dreamboat update. Eddie Terabiel from Long Island is back. He's proven himself as one of the contest's most consistent competitors, and he did it again this week with an 8.56 pound weak fish, the second largest entered this year. That single entry had huge implications in the top three. Kyle Krause was dropped down to 10 points and has been upstaged by Massimo Polverenti's giant bluefish, which now holds third place with 10 points. In second place, we have last week's leader, Bobby Cifarelli, with 18 points, and Eddie Terabile has reclaimed the overall lead with 21 points. Another sponsor has thrown their hat in the ring. Surehold is putting up 10 $200 gift cards for the top three anglers in the contest and all seven largest of species winners. Thank you, Shorehold. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is a fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21 foot Steigercraft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Now let's get to the upcoming events. The Surf Rats Bowl Tournament started June 1st and continues through July 3rd. Then tonight, the town of Isla puts on a free freshwater clinic. Saturday and Sunday is New York State's Fishing Free Freshwater Weekend. Also on Saturday is the Great Gun Mauritius Angler's Shark Tournament. Then coming up on July 8th is the Hampton Bays Fluke Tournament. To get all the details on these events, visit thefisherman.com slash events. Now let's go around the island with some notable catches. So picking up where I left off last week, Brendan Cecile had a 44-pounder. He topped that with a 51, and he went ahead of Mike Kapawa's 48. That was in first place for the Montauk Local Surf Tournament. That puts him in first place. He still has to the end of the month to hold out to win that one. Pat from Captree Bait and Tackle managed a limit of fluke one day last week. Even managed a few weak fish in the Fire Island Inlet area as well. Joseph Yam hit the Nantucket grounds also last week for a solid hole of fluke using his personal bucktails. And back closer to the island, Montauk Star had a near 10-pounder over the weekend, which ended up being a 9.8 at the scale. The Gillen Down Island also saw some solid fluking in the, uh, in the Great South Bay by the Robert Moses Bridge. Nick sailed with them on Wednesday for this 4-pounder inside the Fire Island Inlet. It was a tougher week overall with the wind, but I still got some excellent reports for those getting out to Montauk and fishing near the point for stripers and bluefish. Fish up to 50 pounds were reported from the boats. Jumbo porgies also made themselves known again out that way right off the point. 
fluking in the bays was decent on the south shore with some days seeing limits for those in the Fire Island and Mauritius area, while other days had tough conditions for putting fish in the boat due to the wind. The north shore had a good bite in Smithtown Bay and out of Port Jeff Harbor again for a fluke. Nothing huge was reported, but it was good action and keepers for those who were able to locate the sand eel schools. Remember, sea bass fishing does open up this week in the ocean wrecks, as well as the ro sound rock piles should be lock and load. I'd start off with the local peaches and work my way to the further ones as I get picked clean. Try jigs at first to uh, weed out some bigger fish. Clams will also work too, but they could potentially uh, attract some smaller fish. As a reminder, again, the new size woman is 16 and a half inches with the same three fish bag woman as last year. <music> Now let's get an angler's weather forecast with News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin, who is reporting a steady pick of mostly small fluke in Reynolds Channel the past week with a few keepers here and there. He also said that back bay plugging is still picky, lots of seaweed and cool water. It's 60 to 64 degrees. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast, see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, weather tools, weather sites, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend across Long Island. So water temps came up a little bit. You got some 60s now, uh, west to east across the sound and the ocean. And uh, wave height Saturday, a general 2 to 4, a bit of a roll coming in from the southeast, and some 4 to 8s way offshore between 30 and 50 miles could make things a little bit lumpy out there. So just watch that if you're going offshore. A general two to four, you know, with a southeast roll holds on throughout most of Sunday. The winds aren't going to be that bad. I mean, I think south maybe five to 15 on Saturday most of the day. See a lot of green on there, some clouds, some showers, some rain. So it may be a little bit wet at times, but it doesn't look like a deluge for the weekend. Sunday, maybe a window in there early morning when it's not raining too much. And a light and variable breeze early becoming more onshore southeast in the afternoon. High tide Saturday, North Shore, uh, early morning, late afternoon, midday on the South Shore. High temps, a lot of 70s here west to east across the island, both Saturday, Sunday with the cloud cover. Different look on the Guru on Saturday. And, you know, the winds look okay, you know, general 5 to 15 onshore late in the day. Probably a 3 to 4 foot roll from the southeast. And then Sunday morning I think is good. You know, that little roll we get, you know, maybe 3 to 4 foot at 6, 7 seconds. And then kind of picking up in the afternoon. So overall, the weekend, it looks fishable, both of the sound, the ocean, the bays, the surf. Uh, just watch out some of the rollers coming in and watch out for some of the rain. Again, have a great weekend. Enjoy. Catch them up. Be safe. Matt, back to you. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody from Montauk. Um, the last, starting about Saturday, as everybody knows, the weather changed, kind of shut everything down. But before that, the fishing was pretty spectacular. The bass fishing, blue fishing out here is pretty much about as good as it could possibly be. Um, all the charter boats, regular guys are doing really well. Ken Ellis came up from Maryland. Um, he did really well. I had another um, new client, Mike. He did really good on the bass. Um, some big fish around and on the fluke department, Definitely starting to slowly see some improvements. Um, tuna fishing, I said I'd try to get a report. Didn't really talk to anybody. Didn't really hear, hear of anything coming into the docks. So uh, this week, the east wind's kind of taking over. The weather for the weekend's not looking so great. So I'm going to see Dead and Company up at Fenway. And then next week, hopefully, I'll have a more extensive report when the weather gets better. Everybody. Try to get out, do what you can, and enjoy. Thank you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh, striper fishing, you know, okay. We were in Mauritius Inlet on Monday. Myself, my buddy, and my son drifting live spots. We got three bass, uh, schoolie, and uh, two, well, at the time, uh, two slots. <laughs> if it were today, uh, they would be over slots. So um, for those of you not aware, uh, the 2031 slot limit, um, you know, is in effect now. So please be mindful of that. Take a little extra time with release so we can cut down on the release mortality and just have this fishery thrive. So uh, a little strange. There's not a whole lot of bunk around, a lot of sand eels, uh, crazy bluefish bite going on 
Montauk along with some really nice bass. So, um, but for there not to be bunker in between Shinnecock and Mariches and just kind of strange for this time of year. So we'll see what happens after this blow. Looks like a couple of tough days of weather ahead. Um, you know, um, hopefully you can get out there, get a few casts in. We're a few surf casters that got some nice bass at night last week. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens on the other side of this thing. Fluke fishing, you know, remained uh, kind of like how it's been. You know, a couple of, couple of nice fish coming up, a lot of shorts. And, um, you know, there's good tuna bite in the Hudson, but obviously we'll just have to see what happens after this weather pattern moves through and a uh, tropical storm. And hopefully it's not going to turn into anything bigger than that. So, all right, enjoy your weekend. I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have Cal Harbor Bait and Tackles report. Hey, folks, it's that time again in the week to uh, get our fishing report in. And the report is it's fantastic fishing. What's been tough is this weather. We're getting a lot of wind this week, uh, mixed uh, rain on and off, but there's plenty of fish to be had from the beach. So uh, if you have a boat, you can always, you really want to get out. North Shore is fantastic. There's plenty of uh, places to hide out so you're leeway. So everything is a good thing if you want to get out there. There's plenty of scup to be had. Remember the scup law changed nine and a half from the beach. Ten and a half from the boat. Um, check your limits and then, um, you know, strike bass. That's the big news. 28 to 31. I'm sure you heard it a hundred times already, but uh, just be well aware of it. That means you got to practice those catch and release uh, techniques really, really carefully. Maybe a little less time on the uh, photos, you know, and um, just enjoy your time. Have a great have a great one. Uh, fluke, fluke is still on and off. I'm seeing plenty of fluke come over the rails, but it can be a tough pick at times. Uh, there's plenty of bluefish in our area right now. Uh, what you'll find is one day it might be okay. The next day it's like lights out fishing, but you know, that's just the way it is. It has a lot to do with uh, what the wind is kicking up or not and how much the current is, is working. So if you've got uh, wind against tide and you're on the boat, it's particularly tough. If uh, you're on the beach again, it, it doesn't really matter so much. We have plenty of opportunities, plenty of beaches to choose so that you know, the wind is not so much of a factor. Go out there, have a great time, create those memories. Thank you to everyone who's supporting our other shop in Hail Sight. It's uh, really been very successful. Keep seeing new people, keep signing them up to customer loyalty points. And our folks and friends to the West who are already visit our shop are like more than happy to have a place in Huntington to visit. So it's been uh, really fantastic and we couldn't do it without you. I wanna thank you all so much. And uh, until next week, as always, I bid you peace and tight lines. Let's check in with the latest from Captree Bait and Tackle and Fuel. Thanks, Matt. As far as Captree goes, uh, Fluke has been on fire lately. It started off slow in the beginning of the month, and now it's actually really good. Uh, the fleet's doing well. The piers are doing well. Uh, even our pro staff is doing well. Um, bass and blues, you can still catch um, bass more nighttime than anything, honestly. Um, a lot of bunker fishing. Um, blue fish you could do on the beach as well. Uh, if you want to try and get a weak fish, they're still around. We had a nice run. It's starting to slow down, but there's still some weak fish around. I would suggest uh, gulp for the weak fish. Um, fluke going back to that spearing. For some reason, it's only on bait lately. Um, some of the boats are reporting uh, are good on gulp too, but as far as we've seen, it's only really been on bait. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see you next time. Captain Al Lorenzetti checks in from the Fire Island area in Great South Bay. Hey Matt, uh, Fire Island report, a uh, good one this week. Fluke fishing really picked up. I had one day this week, I had a ten and, inside a 10 and a half pound fluke, a five pound and several other nice keepers on one day. And uh, so that's greatly improved. Still a load of big bluefish around. Uh, bass got a little bit tough. The bluefish are beating everything to the bait. And a couple of weak fish that thinned out, but it's still doable. So there's a lot of fishing action around, and uh, fishing is good right now. Hopefully the weather is going to improve. We've had a lot of east wind, which is tough in Fire Island. Either you have wind with the tide, you drift too fast, or wind against, and you're drifting too slow, unless you go into certain other areas. In a back bay, you can kind of beat those odds. But good thing about east wind, it really pushes clean water from the ocean into Fire Island Inlet. So after an easterly blow, we get real clean water and usually hot fishing to follow. So weather coming up this weekend, a little bit tough, but uh, next week and the weekend, Sunday looks good, Friday doable, and next week looks great. So that's the report. Talk to you next week, Matt. From Jones Beach Bay and Tackle to the West, we have this report. 
Thanks again, Matt. Uh, Jones Beach has been a little bit tough. Uh, outgoing tide, if you want to catch some fluke, spearing only. Uh, bluefish on the incoming, honestly, those are really the two, you know, trophy fish that we've been catching lately. Uh, there's been a couple of dogfish mixed in, some early uh, trigger fish, but with the storm coming up, we don't really know what's going to go happen. So, you know, we have our uh, hopes up for some, uh, you know, some warm water coming in and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, stop by and say hello at the shop and we'll see you out there. With our Flying Freshwater Report, we have Paul McCain from Everbay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, I decided to get out, do a little walk and get away from uh, all my appointments that I had this week because it's going to be a rainy week. So I needed to get out and do a little hiking, a little exploring. And you know, it's funny is I came down here to check out the fishing. I've never really fished here. I don't know why. It's only 20 minutes away from my house. I mean, you have, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, preserve. This is about speaking of preserve. Uh, there's a lot of good things going on. First of all, all the bluegills are on their, on their beds. So that's great for fly fishing. It looks like it's very easy wading too. I'm amazed. I haven't seen anybody out here fishing. And here it is, it's like May, but it's gonna be the first of June. It's actually gonna be raining this week. So you gotta get out. As far as the fishing goes, well, uh, Jordan just got back from the Delaware and he did very well, um, but it's not, it's not an easy feat to do because it's not an easy river. As far as the saltwater goes, well, the captains are out there now when they can get out with the wind and the rain and everything. And uh, they're actually doing pretty good. Hopefully it won't mess it up this week. It's going to be rain all week. So until next week, tight lines, everybody. Let's check in with Chris Landry. Thanks, Matt. I hope everyone had a great Father's Day. I took my oldest son, Cumron, out, and we got on bluefish, sea bass, porgies, fluke, and had a great time. For Father's Day, he got me a monogram knife with BK Anglers on one side, CKL on the other. So thank you for that. Uh, Beast River held their fourth annual Father's Day tournament for the kids with a lot of generous sponsors such as Jack's Bait and others that donated rods and tackle. Uh, there's a recap on Mr. Poseidon's YouTube channel. Um, so shout out to them for doing that for the kids. That, that's awesome. Um, Fishing the Atlantic, A-Team is having their annual uh, charter on Gypsy Charters this Saturday. It's going to be a cast of characters. Um, it's already sold out, but follow uh, the Instagrams for that, and it's, it's going to be a live one. Um, there's a lot of threshers out there being caught, a lot of makos. Um, I even heard of a cobia being caught. I can't verify that. I did hear that, but it should be, uh, you know, they should be in any time. Uh, start, of, start of summer, water temperatures are rising. Uh, soon we should have some mahi and some other fish which cannot be named. Uh, and uh, other than that, stay safe out there. And tight lines, back to you, Matt. Let's check in with David Rogers. Dave. Thank you, Matt. The Western Sound remains to be great for fishing. There are blues, bass, fluke, and porgies swimming in our waters just waiting to be caught. The bluefish bite remains to be on fire, with blues blitzing bunker schools Ooh, and attacking topwater lures yeah. consistently, especially pencil poppers. <laughs> when it comes to bass, they are still around, but you need to bypass the bluefish in order to reach them. Anglers chunk and bait have to deal with bluefish still in the bait intended for bass. A great way to ensure your bait or lure is taken by a striper is by fishing at night. Bluefish tend to go to deeper waters at night, but the bass hang out in the shallows and inshore. At night, the stripers have better chances at sensing your bait and being the first one there to take it. If you're having a tough time getting a bass to bite, try fishing at night. I haven't heard much in terms of fluke fishing turning on. There are still keepers being pulled up, however, not consistently yet. But as summer progresses, I'm sure the bite will heat up. Porgies are in the bays, and if you grab yourself some worms or clams, chances are you'll find some to take the hook. Well, that's all I got for this week's report. And as always, guys, make sure to check out Funky Fishing on YouTube to get a more detailed look into what's biting around the island. Stay groovy, everyone, and back to you, Matt. Let's check it with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. The fluke fishing this past week has really steadily picked up. We've seen some nicer fluke and three to four man limits on boats on our side now. Can 26 and 24 has been the hot spots, drifting squid, spearing, you know, gulp on bucktails. Uh, we know customer Mark Hiller had them up to 10 pounds. Rick had them up to eight pounds. 
with their limits. I know other people, you know, a lot in that four to six pound class. So it's been hot. So get out on there and get on the flat fish. The striped bass fishing still remains steady. It's starting to slow down a little on our deeper water reefs with these big schools coming by. But uh, guys are doing really well drifting live bait, three weight, or with the flutter spoon still. And then chunking at night is also yielding some big fish. The bass bite around the islands has really blown up this past week with the new moon. A lot of the bunkers moved inshore and it brought a lot of big fish inshore. So we've seen a lot of nice fish on the fly rod, you know, spook shallow, or drifting live bait on weighted on some shallow water reefs. The scup are really moving into the beaches. We've seen them up to like 14 to 16 inches from the piers now, like Calf Pastor and then Sherwood Island. And then anglers on the boat are finding some really big hub caps. I would still, you know, try some deeper spots like 28C, some wrecks. Also on the wrecks, 50 foot or more, the sea bass bite, we've seen some really big knotheads. And then on the freshwater side, the trout fishing still remains steady in our local rivers like the Nauk River, Saugatuck, Mianus. We should see that little slow down. Your best bet is to get out there early morning or evening. That's when the trout are gonna be active. All right, thanks and good luck. Rel Ortiz, the Urban Angle, has this report from around the city area. Fishing continues to be good around the city, upstate New York, Long Island, Long Island Sound, even though uh, a lot of fish uh, have moved on east. Uh, upstate New York, you're probably catching fish up to 20, 30 pounds. Same thing here in the city. Um, out east Long Island is a different story. You're going to be catching anything from schoolie size all the way up to 50 pounds. Apparently there was one caught in Montauk the other day. I was there myself and uh, didn't have no luck as I know many others as well didn't have no luck. But uh, that's the way it goes guys. That's fishing. If you're not going to check things out, you're never going to know. Anyway, um, fishing continues still to be good. Uh, me and my buddies have uh, been still going out catching. Um, and we don't have to go too far, and we're still catching them on lures. Um, there is a few guys out there still working with bait, and that's pulling in the bigger fish, it looks like. Um, we're catching fish on lures probably anywhere between 20 and 30 pounds, um, and it looks like some of the bait guys are probably pulling in anything all the way up to uh, 40 pounds. Uh, besides that, guys, um, you know, there's still some weak fish around. There's still some stripers and blues, um, and there's a variety of other species that you can target uh, now that the summer is going to kick in. Anyway, guys, um, thank you for the photos, and um, good luck and tight lines. Back to you, Matt. If you would like to be a part of our weekly video fishing forecast, we are looking for social media savvy anglers for hyper local reporting from the New York metro and Long Island area and especially from the beach. So if you're a captain, tackle shopper, just an avid angler, contact my producer at tcslibayride at gmail.com. The Fisherman Magazine has launched their apparel store, hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, all on sale now and free shipping with orders over a hundred bucks. It's the perfect gift for yourself. Visit thefisherman.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. Don't forget this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to this broadcast and other content. Thanks for watching, and we will see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.